Hey everybody. Well, decided to kind of do a little uh, little change of pace here. Um, kind of lost a train of thought. That that really happens to me a lot nowadays. Um, this I bought this airplane back in November. This is an old uh, Joe Brighty design Killer Chaos. And as I'm sure most of my uh, veteran modelers will, will know, the Chaos has been a tried and true design for many, many years. Um, excellent pattern airplane, sport plane, um, even well past uh, when Joe Bridey was, build, was kidding the airplanes. Other manufacturers carried on the name. Uh, Great Plains built a 40 and 60 size Chaos kit. And Tower Hobbies does a 40 size and 60 size ARF. But there are a lot of Chaos designs, and this one is my favorite. <coughs> now, this is the Killer Chaos. It's a 60 size. It's got their traditional uh, Chaos wing. Very distinct uh, shape and airfoil, which is uh, pretty much identical to all the Chaos designs. But the big difference in this one and uh, like the Super Chaos and Chaos 60 is this was kind of the first uh, version of the airplane that was going into the, the, at the time, the more modern direction of pattern airplanes. So the main difference is really a much longer tail moment. As you can see, it's got, it's got a much longer fuselage than the traditional Chaos. Oh, excuse me. And um, a different design tail. And I've always liked this one. It always caught my eye. I love the design of that tail. And plus having the longer fuselage, it's, it's just all together an awesome airplane. Now I bought this, as I said, back in, I believe it was November. Maybe October. Pretty sure it was November. Um, it was just the airframe. It had, and it, upon arrival, it looked okay. Um, when I brought it home and started looking at it, oh man... It was built by somebody that really didn't know exactly what they were doing. So the wing is completely rebuilt. Um, it, it was built with a lot of twists. Um, a lot of things weren't right. Um, so I redid that. And the whole back end of the airplane, I chopped it off. <clears throat> I chopped it off and I started over. You can see right here where I chopped it off and uh, built a new fin. Uh, stab, rudder, and elevator, because I have one of these kits that I just didn't want to build. I wanted to keep it in the box as part of my collection, so I used the plans and built the new tail section and made it right. It just, it just uh, was all sorts of not right. So, the purpose of this video, not only to show you my, uh, one of my 10 million projects I got going, um, as we all know, uh, because the lovely Horizon Hobbies, and I say that with sarcasm dripping off my face as we speak, uh, when they took over Habaco, which was the carrier of, uh, you know, Great Plains Top Flight, um, we are seeing all that go bye-bye, which is, uh, I know I'm not the only one out there that's very pissed about all that, but the main thing that might be... Probably the biggest tragedy besides the uh, the top flight line of ARFs and kits uh, going bye bye is Monocote could be disappearing. <clears throat> I've gotten different answers from different people at Horizon. Some say, yeah, it's gonna we're gonna carry it on for a while, but it's gonna disappear. Others have said, no, we wouldn't. We would ne We would never do away with Monocote. I don't trust them guys as far as I can throw them. Um, I am not an Ultra Coat fan. Never have been. Well, correction, hold on. Years ago, my dad and I, we covered two airplanes with Ultra Coat back when it was Carl Goldberg Ultra Coat. And uh, <clears throat> it, w it was great to work with, don't get me wrong. Lower temperature, um, really went around curves well, shrunk really nice. But we always preferred Monocoat. But we did a couple planes in Ultra Coat just because, and you know. Hey, it, it, it turned out all right. But, once again, 
when Horizon got their hands on Ultra Coat years ago, it changed. Um, I don't care for it. Um, the main thing that I don't like about it is it doesn't have the gloss that Monocoat has. Some will argue this fact, but sorry, that's that's the way it is. It's got just a little bit more of a satin or silkier look to it. Um, I don't, and honestly, I don't like that. And the fact that it's Horizon, I don't like it even more. So I will never use Ultra Coat ever. Not gonna do it. Even patching my Hanger Nine Extra 260 with Ultra Coat, that that was awful. It's not the same as the old Goldberg stuff. <clears throat> so anyway. The thought of Monocoat going bye-bye is literally devastating for somebody like me because there's nothing that I can't or won't cover, and I like Monocoat. So I had to kind of think to myself, what if it does go away? What am I going to do now? Because Ultra Coat is not going to happen. There's a lot of other coverings out there. Uh, World Models makes uh, the, what's the Teflon line of covering. Um, of course, there's Ultra Coat. There's uh, other China coats out there that actually have names, but we all call them China coat. I came across this stuff um, a while back, but never really looked into it until my buddy Joe out in uh, New Mexico, who uh, has his YouTube channel, Joe's RC Corner, covered a few of his giant scale projects with the Value Hobby new cover. And he's kind of like me. I mean, I, I swear we were separated at birth. Um, he's always, <clears throat> once again, I lost my train of thought. This is terrible. He's old school like me, but he tried out this new cover and he really liked it. So if he liked it, I figured I'd give it a try. And I've been looking for a plane to try it out on. So I think it was Thursday night after work. I've had this ready for pretty much ready for covering, uh, for quite a while. Most of the winter, all I had to do was put the, uh, pockets into the wing for the aileron servos and I could cover it. So for the past day or so I've just been working on the wing, got it all covered, and this is my test bed for the new cover covering. I got yellow and blue. The red pinstripe I'm pretty sure is a monocoat trim stripe, I think. It's just the adhesive stuff. It's really thin, so I know it's not like from an automotive store. But uh, anyway, kind of getting off track there. I really, really like it. It's lower temperature, but it can take the heat, as far as heat directly from the iron. Um, of course, I just started, as you guys know, covering with a cover on the sock, or a cover on the iron. I don't use an iron sock just because they're a lot of money. There's no point when you, if you have spare t-shirts around, why not just go for that route? So I've been doing that. <clears throat> And it really turned out well. I mean, you know, wing tips, everything turned out really good. Um, there are some spots on here that did not turn out so good, but I did it on purpose. Or should I say, on purpose, I had accidents. So let me explain why. Because I'm trying out this covering, I want to test every scenario possible. Um... How much heat can I put on it with the iron before it starts to shrivel up? How much heat can I put on it with a heat gun before it tears or burns a hole? How well does it patch? How well do seams show up? So there's a few areas on this wing that look absolutely perfect now, but that I kind of purpose on purpose screwed up. And we'll get into that in a minute. But I just wanted to show you this thing all put together, and uh, I'll show you the real hot ticket. Hold on. All right, now that we're looking at her underside, here's the hot ticket. Check this out. I mean, what's a classic pattern airplane without a set of retracts? I mean, they wouldn't be in there if the mounts weren't already in there when I got the airplane, but since they were there, I figured, screw it, let's go with it. So anyways, you'll notice the color scheme um, back in those days, and still going into modern times, pattern airplanes had very basic, but what I called bulky color schemes. Um, where you see this type of affair here, the bottom of the wing is identical to the top, except for these four um, squares on the wing. 
And these were put here so you could distinctively tell the difference between top and bottom. So pattern airplanes throughout the years going into the iMac airplanes of today. Um, you don't see too many of the bulky color schemes anymore. But these were very popular uh, way back when. And when done right, boy they look sharp. I mean, if this plane is, if the bottom is facing you, you're going to know about it. So anyways, back to the covering. Um, the first thing that I did is I wanted to see how well this would patch. In other words, putting uh, either from a mistake or, you know, in, a mistake in covering or putting covering over covering in a patch type situation. I wanted to see how it was going to look. Now this is the downside to the lighter grade film, and Ultra Coat's notorious for this, and unfortunately so is this stuff. You'll see the white covering, I mean it's, it's pretty pliable, pretty thin, but yet it is pretty strong. This is where it, it differs from Monocoat. This nasty white backing, which is the adhesive. I don't like this. This is the main reason I really, really love Monocoat. Um, because you don't have this situation. Now, why is that a problem? Well, it's really not. But, it may not even be possible to see on camera. Yeah, it is. Actually, the camera kind of accelerates it. You can see here, normally around a wing block like this, um, I would do the corners first, all the way around the block, and then I would cover the wing up to it. But this I did it backwards. I put these corner strips on after the fact um, just to see what it was going to look like. This gave me a nice hidden area to get an idea for how well this covering blended. But as you can clearly see, you can see that white. You can see that adhesive. No, no matter what you do, you're going to get that. That's the only downside. It really accelerates with the yellow. Um, blue is not so bad. But the yellow, yeah, you can kind of tell. It's not a big deal. That is not a deal breaker for me. Um, it, like I said, it still it still looks pretty good. So the covering itself, what I really really like about this stuff is the fact that it has the monocoat shine. This does not have the ultra coat dullness to it. This stuff is shiny. I mean, planes with ultra coat, even just Rub, put it just just feeling your hands across the surface of an airplane covered in ultra coat, you can tell. This feels like monocoat. I like that. Um, getting into wingtips, as you can clearly see, the wingtips turned out very well. I purposely screwed up on the bottom of both sides. Normally, I would do these with a heat gun. You know, I cover it to a certain point, then I would have enough underneath the grab and pull and pull it around with a heat gun. I did it all with an iron and this stuff really doesn't corner very well with an iron. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it will, but not very easily. So, okay, no big deal, right? So I went ahead and did the top of the wings. Hang on a minute. So on the top of the wings, I used the heat gun and kind of pulled it over um, as I said before, with the iron, when you're putting the material down, it can take a lot of heat before you can actually distort the cover. Um, but on these uh, wingtips, when you're pulling it and hitting it with the heat gun, boy, it will shrink it and just suck it in so tight, you got to be extremely careful. So I wanted to see how much it would take to actually, you know, distort the covering. So by using the heat gun and pulling, I got it a little too hot. And this line right here actually kind of shriveled in like this. It really tucked in tight. I did that for two reasons. One, I wanted to see how much heat it would take before it started to, you know, really shrink the covering down. And two, it's probably not even that easy to see. You might not even be able to, yeah, okay, right there in the perfect light, you can see it. You can see where I cut a small strip of blue to give me a true straight line again. So this... This served two purposes. Now I was able to see how well the blue blends in as far as putting a patch on there. And boy, that looks nice. The blue really does look nice. 
and the overall end result of the wingtip is really good. Yeah, a little, little bubble right there. That'll go away. So yeah, that turned out quite well. <clears throat> um, one of the other things I really liked about it is since I've gone to the the, the covering iron uh, cover, um, I've never liked putting anything on my iron because it never. Let me try to figure out how to how to word it here. I never. I think the problems I had throughout the years is I just wasn't doing it right. So when you're when you're using an iron with a some kind of sock or a shirt or some kind of cover on there, you lose your direct heat source. So yes, this this will get hot, but you have to. You know, you have to put some pressure on it to actually get some real heat. So now that i figured out the best way to do it, is I can kind of feel through the shirt and I can grab the little, you know, the little knob on the, the dial for the temperature and I can adjust it. I keep this iron not at full temperature, but about three quarters of the way to its hottest temperature. And I cover it, kind of treating it like exponential on a control surface. So depending on how much heat I want to use is how much pressure I use on the iron. So if I'm just tacking a piece into place, it just takes just, just literally setting the iron on there. Now when I'm ready to actually adhere the covering to the model, I use just a tad bit more pressure, therefore I get more heat coming through the t-shirt. And if I want to shrink it, I use even more pressure which gives me more heat, then I'm able to shrink down the covering between the bays of the wing, the wing ribs. And it turns out absolutely perfect. And that's the method that I used when I did my, uh, the big chipmunk, which I know everybody's waiting for. We're getting close. It is ready to go, but yeah, we're, we're almost there. We'll get there. So using that method um, has really made uh, putting a cover on the uh, the iron really good <coughs> And of course we got the Ailerons and everything are hooked up. So the wing is completely finished um, I got servos coming for the elevator and rudder And as soon as I get those I'm gonna bury them in the back of the fuselage because I know I'm gonna need some tail weight Those old 61s are pretty heavy So yeah value hobby new cover is it something I'm going to go to permanently? If I have to, I will. Um, I'm going to do monocoat as long as I can, but knowing there's another really good option out there. And I'm, I'm curious to see how well this is going to hold up out in the elements. I mean, is it going to shrivel up in the sun? Is, is it going to hold up in my basement in the wintertime better than monocoat? Who knows? But when you buy the covering, this is what you get. It doesn't come on a tube, it just comes all rolled up. And what's nice about it is, is it's 15 bucks a roll, which is comparable to Monocoat or Ultracoat, but there's 5 meters, which is almost 16 feet. So you get a lot of covering for your money. So that's, that's not a bad gig at all. <coughs> but overall, I'm happy. Actually, I got one more thing to show you. Stand by. Another thing I did uh, while, uh, you know, experimenting while I was doing the covering is these two squares right here were put on at different heat settings. This one right here, I used my normal heat and just using the pressure of the iron to kind of, you know, adjust the heat, if you will. For covering over covering, that did not work. Um, this one has some more bubbles in it that I already took care of. They're, they're barely there anymore But it you know, it started shrink it started, you know shrinking in the edge of the covering So I did have to cut a couple strips one here and one down here because it, it pulled it in because of the heat So I said okay, I turned it down a little bit. I Did this one this one turned out a lot better But I still noticed a little bit of the uh, covering kind of tightening up in a couple spots then I went to another uh, lower heat setting and did these two and they turned out just perfect. So once again, it was trial and error. I had to screw something up to see, you know, what it would do. I, I want to know exactly what this material is all about. 
Don't want any surprises if I decide to cover another a cover another airplane with it. Uh, I just want it to work and look good. So now I've kind of got a pretty darn good idea on uh, how well this covering works, and so far, <coughs> I really like it. I really, really like it. So you can see in here, I spray painted the wheel wells blue before I even covered it, because that way, you know, it just looks a lot better. Super, super, super fancy on the controls here. We got Fataba 3001s on the ailerons. Um, if you go back to the video on my Sig Cub, as well as my uh, Carolina Super Chipmunk, you'll see how I did the aileron uh, servo uh, mounts in there. They work very well. They're pretty much flush mounted to the wing. Very easy to do, quick, and uh, gives you a really good finish when you're done. <clears throat> so for anybody that wants to see at least how I do it, uh, go check one of those those videos out because I uh, I did document how I did those. So as soon as I get some more covering, I'll get some more work done on it. Because there is so much covering that comes in a roll, I did order another kit. I know, I know, I have a problem. Um, it's a very old design. I mean, we're talking late 70s, early 80s. Something very, very, <coughs> oh, excuse me, something very unique. Some of you might remember these. Most are probably going to look at it and go, what the hell is that? But it's going to be freaking awesome. It might be a project I'm going to work on throughout the summer. Um, it shouldn't take me too long to build. But, uh, yeah, you guys are going to love it. All right, just because, i got to put these down again. That's hot, isn't it? Whoever built the wing, I hope they put those mounts in there good. I'm relying on it. <laughs> so there we have it. Value Hobby. New cover. Covering. So far, two thumbs up from this guy. I, I'm impressed with what I see. Um, won't know until we get it out to the field, get it into the sun, the, uh, the sun and the heat. And we'll see what happens to it. But, uh... Anybody wants to, if there's anybody out there that's seen this stuff and was kind of kind of leery about it, <clears throat> take it from the covering guy here. Um, I like it so far. I like what I see. So don't lose faith on Monaco. As long as you can get it, get it. But if you can't, give this stuff a try. All right, everybody. Later.